In 1986, there was a movie called The Money Pit, and when I was a kid, I loved watching it. And now that I'm older, I have more of a real estate mind, and I wanted to see what it was about this movie that people could learn some lessons from, and if it actually even pertained to real estate today. After watching it, it does, and I'm going to be pointing out the things that you could learn from watching an old movie like The Money Pit. Even though it was made in 1986, it doesn't mean it can't relate to real estate today. Fun fact, the house from the Money Pit was for sale in 2018 for $5.9 million. Jack can help us. Isn't Jack in jail? No, 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 no. He got off with a small fine. Jack's a perfectly legitimate real estate agent. If your real estate agent went to jail for real estate issues, then don't hire that real estate agent, no matter how much of a deal they're making for you. This is a million dollar house, literally. I just want an apartment. My girlfriend's ex-husband returned from Europe today. That's nice. No, we have to get out of his place now. It's an uncomfortable situation as it is. Why would somebody sell a million dollar house for 200,000? Who knows? A divorce, a loan shop. Why would somebody? sell a million dollar house for 200,000. That's what they known as a red flag. <laughs> Many people have said that if it's too good to be true, most likely it is. And you will find out it is a little bit too good to be true. <laughs> Fun fact, the home from the money pit is also known as Northway, an eight bedroom home that's located in the village of Laddingtown. What this real estate agent says next makes me want to throw up. <laughs> Dogs, drugs, sudden death. The point is, you get to capitalize on a fellow human being's misfortune. That's the basis of real estate. Have you got a deal? It's not the basis of real estate. I mean, there are some good deals out there if somebody has some misfortune, but not that sweet of a deal. Very rare, diamond in the rough. But you better make sure all your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed before you jump in on a deal like this. <laughs> this can't be it. It's the address. Beautiful. I know. Something must be wrong. Mm -hmm. well, let's go see. Yes, there must be something wrong. <laughs> and you better make sure you find out what of those things are. But at least they're going to take a tour of it now. Excuse the way the place looks. I really let it go to hell since Carlos left. But the house is beautiful. Carlos and I were very happy here. It's all over now. The living room's in here. Listen, if you want any of the furniture, it's all for sale. If you are willing to buy the furniture, just know the sale of the property is going to be separate from the sale of the furniture. You cannot roll in the furniture into the cost of the house. That does not include. As a matter of fact, here in Louisiana, if the people ask for certain things like uh, the refrigerator, the washer, the dryer, the patio furniture, the TV mounts, we always put it in um, either a separate addendum or there's a section on the contract itself that says all of these items remain as is with no added value to the uh, to the property. So meaning that those things are basically you're getting for free. There's a tricky step. I keep needing to fix it. Could I use your bathroom? Would you use the one downstairs? All my personal things are still in this one. Oh, sure. There's a tricky step. She's been meaning to fix it. So she pointed that out. But where's the property disclosure? You know, they're taking a tour of the house. A lot of times before we even take tours of houses, us as real estate agents will give the property disclosure to the buyers, especially if it's a property they're interested way before they go to the house itself. That way the buyers know what's wrong with it ahead of time if the seller has disclosed it. Fun fact, there's actually 5.5 acres with this estate. No way is anybody gonna be doing this on the weekend by themselves. I'm desperate to close. Well, we need a little time. To... There isn't any time. Expedition is Friday. Expedition? When the words come out of a seller's mouth, I'm desperate to close, that means you can go ahead and lowball an offer. Even though they're saying it's 200000 if she's willing to be desperate to close, see if she'll even go lower. That's just a little helpful tip if you're deciding to buy flip properties. Anybody that's desperate can take a little bit lower. Jack was right. We can't lose. Nothing can be this easy. Sure it can. You know what this is? This is the short line at motor vehicles. Did you hear that? The train is coming right when we decided to buy the house? This has got to be an omen. I can feel it. 
This is it. Everything's breaking down. Nothing will make a real estate agent cringe when they say, <laughs> I don't know, I feel like it's a sign. There is no heavenly sign that's telling you to buy or not buy a house. And unless your bank account says you can't afford it, that's the only sign you should really be paying attention to. I know that some people are going to give me some guff on it, but honestly, there's no like magical force that cares if you buy or don't buy a home. <laughs> It's all in what your gut tells you. And if you feel like it's right for you, then it's right for you. And if it doesn't feel right, then don't feel forced to buy any piece of property. Wait, wait, they bought it. All right, then, way to go. All right, all right let's just say that you can buy a house, but you can't buy a house like that fast. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. You still have to go through a title company. The real estate office would know way ahead of time before they would get a phone call and you can't mark anything sold until the title work is completely done. This was only made for the movies. Nobody gets a stamp on a piece of paper. Granted, this was done in 1986, so maybe they did put a stamp on a piece of paper, but nobody would ever say anything is sold until you've got some signatures and some title work that goes along with it. So the plumbing's not perfect. We'll get it fixed. All of these upcoming incidents that happened to them could have completely been avoided by one simple task that will cost them no more than about $500. The most I've ever seen a home inspection cost is $1,500. And if anybody tells you they're not worth a penny, they're being silly. The home inspector would have caught the, all the plumbing problems that looks like is about to happen. And if you have clogged pipes that are full of mud, that means that there's tree roots most likely in your lines. And that can cost a very pretty penny. Granted, I do know this is the movies and it made for a good movie, but I just want to let you know if it did a little proper prior planning. How long do you think all that'll take? Two weeks? Really? Yeah, that's all. When do you think you could start? Just as soon as you check, please. Well, couldn't you at least hang the door? I got enough cash for that. Haven't got the right materials. What's right? Won't hold a screw. No wonder you've been turned down by every plumber in the valley. Boy, that's not true. <laughs> that's another one of those things. Never pay up front. I mean, of course, pay a deposit. And where's the man's contract for this? He's just telling them, I want the money up front. I'm not willing to tell you how much anything is in writing. That's another red flag. <laughs> I think he better find a better contractor. Maybe they did things differently in 1986, but I don't know. I think I need everything in writing and I think you should too, 100%. I haven't tried everybody yet. Please, you gotta help me. I don't know. Now write me a check quick before I come to my senses. Five grand. Five grand, five thousand dollars? That's just a deposit. But you didn't even- Just a deposit. Well, I'm not trying to tell you your business, but you haven't even looked at my pipes. I looked at them three years ago. You figured they've improved with age? Oh, another red flag. See, if they had gotten a property disclosure, they would have known that there was plumbing issues prior. Obviously, they didn't do that. It would have been stated in the property disclosure. Now, if the seller had provided a property disclosure, they would be required to disclose that. In the state of Louisiana, if they do not disclose that, guess what? You get sued. And you can't hold withhold any kind of information that you know that's pertinent to the property itself, whether it be plumbing, whether it's electricity, whether it's the AC, if you know there's something wrong with it and you withhold that information, just know that you're going to get sued. It's gonna happen. And guess what? You're gonna lose. I'm sinking fast into the money pit and I don't want to drag you down with me. So save yourself while there's still time. Walter. I'm just giving our last $5,000, our last 5,000 borrowed dollars to the shirks. 
Walter, I don't mean to be questioning you, but why... They were willing to take it. The legitimate people wanted four times as much just to say hello. Okay, the cheapest doesn't always mean that you're going to get the best. So when you go with the cheapest bid, I would really make sure that they have good referrals that you can contact to know that they've done a good job for other people in the past. Sometimes when you go the cheapest, it ends up being the most expensive because you have to hire the most expensive people to fix what the cheaper people did. So don't always go with the cheapest bid unless you've fully vetted those contractors ahead of time. Well, everything looks pretty well under control. It does? Well, not to the layman's eyes, of course. They completely ripped up our house! They sure as hell did, didn't they? They really ripped the guts out of it. They're work animals, I'm telling you. Look at those holes, huh? Uh, when I do get the permits, how long will the job take? Two weeks. Two weeks? Two weeks? You sound like a parakeet there. Okay, here's the thing. Whenever you have any work done in your house, you make sure you have somebody watching over your job. Unless you have a uh, general contractor that's watching over the job that you know knows what they're doing, that they're f overseeing exactly what's going on. This looks like a hot mess. And I like to always say that whenever you're flipping a house and you work with contractors, they always say two weeks. I don't know what that is. They always say two weeks and it ends up being six. And ever, whenever you have a timeline like that, you can forget it. It's not to happen in two weeks. If you can't envision it, then it's not even realistic, but it makes you hopeful because <laughs> after two weeks, you're like, well, how much longer? And they're like two more weeks. And then after those two more weeks, they're like, we're going to be done in like three days. They know that you've had enough. So they don't want to tell you it's going to take a month because then you're like, oh, but if you say two weeks and you say, I just need a little bit more time and they're halfway done, then you're like, oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> So what lessons did we learn from this movie? One, make sure you hire a reputable real estate agent that's gonna represent your needs, not theirs, not their bottom line and not their checkbook, and they haven't gone to prison for real estate fraud. The second is you're going to make sure that the seller has a property disclosure. So you can look at that ahead of time. Third is you're going to get a home inspection. It's $500 a piece of mind and a lot of the problems that they faced in this movie, you wouldn't have faced if you had a property inspection. And lastly, you're going to make sure that you have a good general contractor that you can work with. They have a good relationship with that has lots of referrals that you can contact, has lots of evidence of past projects that you can see. Make sure they have a social media account because if they're good, they're willing to show off their work. If you like these kind of React videos and you would like to watch more, go ahead and click this playlist right here. If you'd like to watch something else that YouTube recommended, go ahead and click this video right here. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer, and I tell you all this because good real estate information matters.